Greetings, unsettled souls. Where's my theme music? <laughs> Better late than never. Guys, uh, welcome to The Correct Views. I am your host, curator of the show, Sam DeGangie. If you'd like to uh, donate, help me uh, help me out with things, I would appreciate it. You can do so at thecorrectviews at hotmail.com. Uh, the goal is to bring you the news that you're not, not just that you're not getting elsewhere, but maybe give it to you in a different way. And particularly when we do the Dunn's Cap of the Month show, the goal here is to find the dumbest, the fulliest, the fulliest, the most full worthy, if you will. Um, some people said they couldn't hear me last time. That should be rectified now. Let me know if it is. All right, friends, we're going to get right into it. It's the biggest collection of dunces ever. We're going to go over how not only are men better at everything, but ladies, men are better at being women than you are. Wait, what? We'll get to it. Uh, I want to talk real quick about this. Look at it. In Bill Cosby's Pennsylvania home, what to know here on Fact Cam. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but I do want to say up front, I'm skeptical. If someone brings sexual allegations way later, question that. Um... In any event, there, even if he is guilty, whether he is innocent, there is no question whatsoever that Cosby was hated for speaking the truth. He's plain and simple. He was hated for speaking the truth. He warned people where uh, hip-hop culture was going, and they said that he was blaming blacks. And he's like, listen, I don't know if blacks or whites own these record labels or not. But they are glamorizing going to prison. They are sending blacks to prison. And we are somehow saying that this empowers black people. Look at music now. What is it? It's a bunch of entitled crybabies. Nobody plays any instruments. Most of them don't know enough words to be able to solve a kindergarten crossword puzzle. They have no sense of diction. And I don't mean they as in black people. I mean they as in who do just about everything on the radio. That would also go for uh, Billy Eilish. You know, it's very white. You could play her melody lines blindfolded with a broken hand. Here's my point. I know she's not hip hop, but I digress. Bill Cosby warned everyone that we were taking the art out of music and we were using the art as a deception, as a means in a way to lock away people who were seen as undesirable. And in many instances, those were black people. So what did they do? They went after Bill Cosby because Bill Cosby was trying to warn blacks about what was happening. And if you look at the, the unrest in the street and the seeking of victimhood and all of this crap that we're dealing with today, you can see that Mr. Cosby was quite right. But that's not what leads us here to include them on the Dunce Cap of the Month award show. No, 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 no. You know, you know and it, it gets silly and ridiculous as we go. You have to really screw up to end up on the Dunce Cap of the Month award show. So let's see here. The, the, the person is... James Legate, James Legate wrote, Bill Cosby has returned home Wednesday after the Pennsylvania Supreme Court threw out his sexual assault conviction, and he was released from the state prison outside Philadelphia. Cosby, 83, and his wife, Camille, have owned the Elkins Park Estate, like, pay attention here, this, why they're on the show, since June 1983, a little over a year before the Cosby Show began airing on NBC in the fall of 1984, the couple paid $225,000 for the property real estate record show in 83. Ouch. The home is much larger than Cosby's former prison cell. What? Let's reread that. 
The home is much larger than Cosby's former prison cell. Well, no shit. You mean somebody whose stand-up routine is the most recognizable when quoted since Who's on Third? You mean somebody who had the biggest comedy career, you could argue, in mainstream history, that this person would have a home bigger than his prison cell? How did you get your job, James Leggett? What kind of drugs was the person on who hired you? And it goes on to say how big Cosby's home is. You can see it on Fox Business. That's how I wanted to start the show. The, his, Bill Cosby's mansion is much bigger than a prison cell. Yeah. I imagine it would be. I imagine it would be. Friends, uh, the Columbus Dispatch. Well, you, you know, a piano's not a car. Well, you know, a tree doesn't jump. You know, Cosby's home is... This is where I really miss Christelle. We would have a blast with this if she was still with the show. Um, the Columbus Dispatch. A Columbus judge is adding a new term to defendants. Probation. Get your COVID shot. I was going to go ahead and think about making this the winner of the Dunst Cap of the Month Award. But not only is it not the dumbest, but it's also, as some of these are, cruel. And I do try to avoid cruelty as the dunce cap. Dunce cap is supposed to be pure stupidity. This, this, this bonehead, he doesn't have any idea what someone's medical history is in front of him. He has no idea. A lot of the people who commit a very large number of crimes tend to, for instance, dabble in cocaine. Just hair in my mouth. Dabble in cocaine dabble in crack, dabble in heroin, things that damage the heart. Now we know from the, the, the pamphlets, the warnings that come in the vaccinations that there is a chance that a person could get uh, heart issues from the shot. And that those with heart issues should probably uh, think twice about getting it. So this doctor, I'm sorry, did I say doctor? He's a judge. He's not a doctor. Imagine that. Shazam, Sparky. This judge has decided what people should inject into themselves. And many of the people who commit many crimes also aren't real sharp. We'll put it that way. Many of the people that may be appearing before him aren't that intelligent, and he could be setting them up for a myriad of problems. And that's even if, if I say, okay, I suddenly believe everything that the vaccine industry has ever said regarding this vaccine. Okay. By their own admission, there are some people, as I just laid out one scenario, there would be countless others, there are some instances where the shot is a terrible idea for the person who's going to be getting it. So listen to this. A Franklin County judge began including vaccination against COVID-19 as a condition of defendants' terms of probation. Common pleas judge Richard Fry. Now pause. Are you going to call him? Are you going to call and leave a message for Judge Richard Fry and tell him politely, politely, legally, in a way that is not threatening. That's not what we do at this show. You didn't ask Richard Fry why he's playing doctor? Because otherwise I'm doing this show for nothing, right? I'm doing it for literally nothing if people don't do this. So let me know if you let me know in the comment line if you have contacted this judge. Politely. Franklin County, Ohio Common Pleas Judge Richard Fry. Politely contact. He said last week he added the vaccine as a condition on three cases in the week of the roughly 20 sentences he imposed. Oh, well, won't you, well, won't you imagine that? He said he discussed the matter in open court with the defendants and they attributed their unvaccinated status to procrastination. None raised any philosophical, medical, or religious objections. So, yeah, he is, it is legal. I get it. He's skating that line there. But... He said, it occurred to me that at least some of these folks need to be encouraged not to procrastinate, Fry said, opined. 
in the interview. In interview. I think it is a reasonable condition when we're telling them to get employed and get back into the community. How are they going to get back into the community if they're one of the people who shouldn't have gotten the injection and you've now damaged their heart? How, how much is that going to cost taxpayers? Because they're probably not insured, or depending on I'm just guessing here, if they're in court a lot. One man named Cameron Stinger entered a guilty plea for one charge of improperly handling firearms in a motor vehicle for which he was sentenced to two years probation. Uh, it's called community control in Ohio here. Stringer must admit to random drug, submit to random drug screening, avoid further legal trouble, return the firearm in question to its rightful owner, how very kind, and obtain a COVID-19 vaccine within 30 days and provide proof to the probation department. You know what? If that bothers you, I think you guys should let him know. Very dangerous. Very, very, very unsettling. Let me tell you another thing. One of the things beyond what it could do, my family, my mom and dad, well, my particularly, I should say, my dad, my mom's side of the family, but not my mom, all have heart issues. As far as I know, I have a healthy ticker. I'm not on any medications at all. I take vitamins and supplements, but I'm not on any medications. So why the hell would I risk this? I could get it and die, but that's no great loss either. So why am I going to risk this? I'm just not. Um, but even if I was to follow the science, giving away a million dollars to take it, you're doing this, you're doing that. You're not giving me a million dollars to eat my fruits and vegetables. You're not giving me a million dollars to take vitamin D, which I do, and vitamin D is shown... Well, let's say this way. Everybody who's uh, had COVID-19, well, not everyone. In many instances, those who have acquired COVID-19 have very low vitamin D levels. You don't see them giving people a million dollars to prove that they take their vitamin D every day. So, why are they having to butter everyone up so much? Oh, it's so that we can reach healer immunity. Or here's a really funny one. It's because they care so much about us all. You're going to go ahead and start offering lollipops like some stranger passing out candy from a van. If I get close and pet your new puppy, I'm probably not going to go ahead and try your vaccine. Um, Fox 5 is going to zip through some of these. Wrong patient gets kidney in Ohio hospital. And many of these are from my fair state of Ohio. I, I It's watching it go down, down, down. I, I, my father, many of you know, was in the Cleveland Clinic. And I was... Floored by the awful care he received. Awful, awful care. Some of the worst care I've ever seen. And the Cleveland Clinic has this stellar reputation. My first wife, at the time I thought it was the best care in the whole world, and now looking back, there's a series of procedures and surgeries she went through that she may not have ever needed, maybe if she'd have went elsewhere. I'm not a big fan of the Cleveland Clinic personally. However, it looks like university hospitals isn't much better. An Ohio hospital has acknowledged that a patient received a new kidney meant for someone else. D -d Officials at university hospitals in Cleveland on the Monday apologized, oh, I'm so sorry, for their mistake and said two employees have been placed on administrative leave. The kidney given to the wrong patient is compatible and the person is expected to recover. Very, very nice. The other patient's surgery has been delayed. Officials said that the hospital is reviewing how the error happened to prevent these kinds of errors going forward. Yeah? <laughs> we have offered our sincerest apology. I bet you did. And apologies to those patients, these patients and their families. Hospital spokesman, uh, unenviable job there, Georgia Stamatis said in a statement, he also said, we recognize they entrusted us with their care. We just didn't recognize what kidney, oh, I'm sorry, he didn't say that. The situation is entirely consistent with our commitment to helping patients return to health and live life to the fullest, even if that means giving them a kidney they don't need. I'm sorry, he didn't say that last part, friends. I'm, I'm very tired. Um, guys, here we have the, this is from InfoWars, but it's actually from the Washington uh, Post. 
Host or writer of Wapo Writer calls the calls for children to watch Kink at Pride Parades. Now see, look at that. That's just ugh, ugh. Okay, now see, I I used to consider myself a liberal, and I'll tell you why. If a guy wanted to wear a dress, fine. I didn't think he should get his ass stomped into the ground. I don't think that uh, some lesbian couple should be denied jobs because they like to go home and play in the liquor cabinet. That's fine with me. Here's my problem. Little did any of us know who supported this basic equality that I hope all of us listening to this show would support. This has been about fetishizing and normalizing the abuse of children in some regards. And while our, our society is out in all directions trying to pin the tail on the Nazi and find the white supremacist in the bushes, this is happening right in front of us. And as you'll see in later stories, they're singing about it. They are praising the fact that they are coming for children. I, I've never been blessed to have children. One of the children is so very bad. You have no idea. But I never had that blessing. And I think about what these idiot parents must be thinking. Not to allow their children on a gay person. I'm not saying that. I'm saying to allow their children around people who are teaching them kink. You know what kink is? You, know, you do guys do know, right? You know, things up the holes and the... Not even normal sex, which I don't think we need to, on the street corner, be teaching children about sex. But that should be up to the parents and the idea that they're talking about bringing kink to children is, I'm, I'm going to put it right out there, it's inexcusable. And I'm a libertarian, but liberty is about choice. If you don't know anything about sex, then you don't have the ability to decide what nuances of sex like this you enjoy. And again, I, I'm not someone who's lived a sexually pure life. I'm also not somebody who would come out here and demand that everybody accept and praise what I may or may not have done in my life. I mean, I'm not gay or bi, but I certainly have not lived a pure life. But I'm not coming for anybody's children crying out loud. I, I, the other day I was in a, a, a discussion on Facebook and somebody had said, they asked the question, what is the sample in the song? And the song was The Land of Rape and Honey by Ministry. And I said, that's Ministry. I said, Sieg Heil, which it's a sample from Hitler. Because I wrote Sieg Heil, I got a three-day suspension as if I was praising a Nazi. Ministry is a far leftist band, unfortunately. They're a bunch of social justice warriors. They were using the sample to prove a point. And yet, if you even you talk about his all he was doing was referencing history. It was a Hitler sample. You get three days suspension. But you talk about coming after children with kink, and you're all but given the key to the damn city. And again, Kink is something that develops after you've learned the proper place of sex, is a good way to put it. After you've learned the birds and the bees, then you can decide what kinds of birds and bees you like. But this idea that... Well, let me just read this. This is, this is not good. All of the civilization kind of not good. The Washington Post, a Washington Post writer is calling for children to be exposed to bizarre sex practices at pride parades. Yes, really. Lauren Rowello, an autistic writer and former sex worker who identifies as they, penned an op-ed Tuesday for WAPO called, Yes, Kink Belongs at Pride and I Want Kids to See It. In it, 
Rowello described a situation where her own children saw kink behaviors on display for the first time at a Pride event in Philadelphia. When our children grew tired of marching, we plopped on a nearby curb. Just as we got set on our elementary school, we pointed in the direction of oncoming floats, raising an eyebrow at a bare-chested man in dark sunglasses whose black suspenders clipped onto a leather thong, Rowello wrote. The man paused to be spanked playfully by a partner with a flog. What are they doing, my curious kid asked as our toddler cheered them on. The pair was the first of a few dozen kinksters who danced down the street, laughing together as they twirled their whips and batons, some leaning companions on leashes. At the time, my children were too young to understand the nuance of the situation, but I told them the truth, that these folks were members of our community celebrating who they are and what they like to do. Okay, look, I love golf chips. I'm all about whips and chains and consensual fun. Okay, fine. Isn't this something that needs to be given to their children regardless of what she, I'm not going to say they, what she, Miss Rowello, says? Isn't the idea that her children might be at a level where they're able to understand and process this, but other children cannot? Isn't that just a bit of common sense that we used to always employ to raise healthy children. If we want our children to learn and grow from their experience of pride, we should hope they'll encounter kink when they attend. How else will they learn the scope and vitality of queer life? Why do they have to learn the scope and vitality of queer life? Why does anybody have to give a damn about the scope and vitality of queer life? I don't. I don't give a damn. I don't want to learn about it. I don't care what they do. Let them do it. I don't care. And I don't care that it offends them that I don't care. Yuck. Okay, plain and simple. My opinion is yuck. And I don't care if you want to do yuck. You go right ahead. But when you are bringing it to children, you are damaging them in terms of a healthy development. You are teaching them to drive before they can walk. You have to learn the proper... Look at this. So he's in a dog mask, so the kid thinks it's fine. Look at that. That's, that's, that's child abuse. If we're afraid to talk about kink with our children, we prioritize the status quo, sanitizing and censoring their access to information. No, we're allowing them to grow into adults before they learn about really, let's call it nuanced sides of sexual behavior, some of which is extremely dangerous and extremely harmful. You're going to have kids putting things up their penises because that happens to be a kink that some people like. Oh, that's not going to lead to any damage, is it? but let's teach them about kink. It's child abuse. So is this, uh, InfoWars, gay men's choir that sang We're Coming for Your Children rushes to cover after pedophilia accusations. Accusations? They say they're coming for your children. Look at this. It's disgusting to even have it on the show. And again, I don't care that people do it. I'm talking about this fetishizing children. We were always told that the homosexual lifestyle was not about children. This looks like it's about children to me. Some of the members of a gay men's chorus that released a controversial video, which the singers promised to corrupt your kids and convert your children, convert. Oh, I thought they were born that way. Wait, you mean they're not all born that way? You mean some are converted? Well, imagine that. That sounds like what a lot of straight people and people that knew how to read the, uh, the manual knew forever. DSM manual. Oh, but now they've changed it to be gay-friendly. They want to convert your children, and they appear to be convicted pedophiles, according to a research study conducted by the Western Journal. Well, no surprise. 
We are grooming the new generation of Americans to be fully embracing of diversity and inclusivity. And for the children and the people that support it are going to realize that this is going to be the grooming of the next generation. That's the whole goal is to make kids that aren't used to seeing something like me more comfortable to seeing it. No one's there to push an agenda on anyone. No one's there to um, persuade people or to recruit people. Who wants to be a... Not recruiting children when you dress up like a dog and put yourself on a leash and the kid wants to play with the puppy and the next thing you know he's being converted as they say that's their word converted into getting god only knows what done to them the chorus roster and board of directors in the san francisco gay men's chorus were apparently removed from the group's website around the time these revelations became public. In other words, they're hiding it. In their own words and songs, the LGBT blah 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 agenda announces that they want your children. The video of the chorus singing, we're coming for your children, went viral. As we celebrate pride on the progress we've made over these week. past years, there's still work to be done. So to those of you out there who are still working against equal rights, we have a message for you. You think we're sinful, you fight against our rights, you say we all lead lives you can't respect, but you're just frightened, you think that we'll corrupt your kids if our agenda goes unchecked, fight just this once, you're correct. Using the Wayback Machine, the way